Hello everyone! At last, we are now in our last quarter of our school year 2020-2021. I hope you are still here staying with us despite the difficulties brought to us by this pandemic. This video lesson covers the basics of doing research. So stay tuned for the series of video lessons because this will prepare you for your research subject in the upcoming school year. I am once again Sir Jester Soriano, your video instructor for this week. At the end of this instruction, you are expected to illustrate what null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, level of significance, rejection region, and types of error in hypothesis testing. Also, you are expected to identify the parameter to be tested given in a real-life problem. Let's kick this lecture by defining what a research is. When you hear about research, you probably think of science laboratories, science apparatuses, and scientists in white coats. This is the very setup of research in some disciplines. But you, students, can also do your research, not in laboratories, but in different form. So, what is research? Research is a systematic investigation in the establishment of facts based on evidence. It always starts with a problem. Let us say you want to know if 80 is the average grade of students who are taking the statistics and probability subject. After stating your problem, you are then to create your hypothesis or what we call your educated guess. Remember that your hypothesis is a statement that is either true or false. In the said problem, you can hypothesize that the average grade of students who are taking statistics and probability is 80. Note that the hypothesis is not true unless evidence told you so. What you do to prove your hypothesis is you should collect evidence that support it. We already know what a research and hypothesis is. Now, we will discuss about the two types of hypothesis, the null and the alternative hypothesis. What are the differences of the two? Let us illustrate this by an example. Imagine a person who is accused of plagiarism was sent to court. My question is, is the person innocent or guilty of the crime when he enters the court? Well, the answer is, he is innocent until proven guilty. The court will assume first that the person is innocent until there are sufficient evidence that prove that he is guilty. Coming back to the difference between null and alternative hypothesis, the initial claim, which is the person is not guilty or innocent, is called the null hypothesis. This is what the accuser will try to disprove. So for an instance, there is sufficient evidence that the null hypothesis is disproved, the judge can now reject it, and they will favor the opposite of the null hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis which is, the person is guilty. You can now use this as basis in identifying your null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the one you want to disprove. It is the exact opposite of what a researcher or experimenter expects. Like the judge, this will be your initial claim and is always true unless there are sufficient evidence to reject it. The alternative hypothesis, on the other hand, is what the researcher or experimenter expects. Starting from here, we will denote null hypothesis as h sub 0 and an alternative hypothesis as h sub 1. Okay, to test your understanding, let's get back to our first problem earlier, where the researcher is suggesting that 80 is the average grade of the students who are taking statistics and probability. So please the, hit the pause button and write your own null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis can be written as H sub 0, the average grade of students who are taking statistics and probability subject, is not 80. Note that the null hypothesis is always in negative form. We can also write this in symbols as mu which is the notation for mean, is not equal to 80. The alternative hypothesis, on the other hand, is h sub 1, 
the average grade of students who are taking statistics and probability subject is 80, the total opposite of h sub 0. In symbols, we write this as mu equals 80. In research, researchers also commit errors. There are two types of errors, the type 1 and the type 2 error. If a researcher rejects the null hypothesis, where in fact the null hypothesis is true, then the researcher committed a type 1 error. On the other hand, if the researcher accepted the null hypothesis, where the null hypothesis is false, the researcher committed a type 2 error. To illustrate further, let us say there is a glass of milk that will make you big, like in the Alice in the Wonderland, on a table. You want to become big, but you are not sure whether the milk is spoiled or not. So from our discussion of null and alternative hypothesis, our null hypothesis should be h sub 0, the milk is not spoiled. You rejected it, and so you drink the milk. After a while, your stomach hurts. Therefore, you committed a type 1 error. On another case, you did not reject the null hypothesis. So you did not drink the milk, thinking it was spoiled. Another student took it, and the student became big. You committed an error in your judgment, and this error is the type 2 error. That's it for our video lesson today. Some lessons that are included in your module are not discussed in this video lesson. These left out lessons will be discussed next week, so stay tuned. I hope you learned something from this video lesson. Thanks for watching!